Hello, I am going to do a three card uh, spread reading for the month of June. I use the herbal tarot deck. Um, as you can see, my my cards is a little beat up. This is actually my, um, I bought two of the same deck because I wanted to practice with one and I had a small booklet and I cut all the uh, the card terms out of the booklet and pasted them on the card as a rubric that I, you know, uh, intuit from afterwards. I just use it as a framework. Um, but my new deck is in some other place that I have once lived. I'm not sure exactly. Um, so I carry around my old but faithful one. Uh, I'm just going to shuffle. And at this time, uh, please consider that, please consider having the most clear, direct, comprehensive, uh, assistive reading possible um and regardless of the fact that i am doing this in your past um time is ephemeral and uh dimension means measure right to measure so anything can be a measure depending on what it's measuring we're talking about measuring time anything or experience which time can also be considered as then we're talking about a person can be a measure a planet can be a measure, an animal, a plant. So there are many dimensions and time is just one of them. And if there, if, di if time is a, a dimension and a dimension is simply a measure and a measure can be a human being, then we know that there are at least 7 billion dimensions on this planet, right? So for that reason, time is ephemeral. It's a concept that is experienced differently by everyone. And so the fact that I am shuffling this in the past and asking you to think about June the most clear, assistive, direct, um, supportive reading that you can get for June does not mean that your thinking about that right now is not actually affecting what I am doing. Um, there's so much more out there than we can even know. Uh, and let me see here if we are done. No, I got to keep shuffling. Uh, let me let you know that I give the readings and what I aspire to is give readings that people need, not readings that people want. Um, if we knew what we needed, then we may get to what we want and we might get it in ways that we've never expected or hoped for. But if we only go after what we want, we may misdirect ourselves because we know there, we know less than what we don't know. There is more that we don't know than what we know. So for that reason, better to accept lessons in the form of no, not for you, not now. And also in the form of go, do it, do it now. I um, already feel like this reading is going to be kind of on these topics. You know what I'm saying? Okay, let me check here. Okay. All right, I do a spread called Koa. Uh, it's of my own making, which isn't to say that it doesn't exist out there in some other form or in some other description. But Koa, for me, C stands for concern in this case. June was our concern. O stands for obstacle or opportunity. And A stands for uh, advantage or aversion. And they can switch or have two of the th same things from different perspectives, but we'll see as we go about the reading. So the first card that we have is Pan. Pan is a major arcana card. Uh, that's Lobelia, uh, if you're we're curious plant, plant lovers. So Pan is a major arcana card. Major arcana cards in the, in the typical card deck would be your major players, your ace, your queen, your king, your jack, um, and your diamond. So major arcana, because they are, let's say, elevated or ascended uh, energies of the deck, have to do not only with uh, having meanings assigned to your spiritual path, your life path, your purpose. What are you doing here? So for that reason, there's a, a, a meaning assigned to the card itself, pan the card. And there's also a meaning in addition to the pan card because pan card is a major arcana card. Uh, that's just for the, the technical people out there. So Pan uh, is symbolically called for breaking up old patterns, letting go of cares and worries, and of course, more playfulness, right? Never, never land. Right side up, it says playfulness, frivolity, make-believe, getting loose, lightening up. 
This is an important card because I think for a lot of people right now, they are on the precipice of change or on the precipice of total destruction, like a Phoenix moment, right? Also appropriate because look, they got pants around by fire. They're just saying, oh, wait, focus. Can we? Oh, shit. So he's surrounded by fire, right? So we're talking about... Uh, Oh, right. Lightening up. I was like, why am I talking about fire? See, this is what happens sometimes when the messages don't come in necessarily through technical manners that we're used to. So uh, we're talking about allowing illumination for a new person, playfulness, playing with our perception of ourself, not being so strict with ourselves, not being so constricting with ourselves, um, make believe. The whole thing here is that Thoughts become things. Thoughts become things. Thoughts become things. This is the signature in my email. And I've thought, I think about it a lot, almost every day. Because for instance, we take, we modern people take life for granted. We act almost as if like one day, fully adult humans of both and all genders opened their eyes and were conscious. And then they looked around and they were like, this is a planet because they already had language. And there were buildings and there were cars and they knew how to drive the cars and what the buildings were for as if we arrived on earth simply like this was not all created by us. Right. So there is this disbelief, this skepticism in our modern time about the ability to actually change your circumstances because so many things have been fought for or struggled for or died for and murdered for in the past that now we uh, ha can have readily by going into stores, by looking up a book, by emailing, by any of these things, right? So there's this, there's this um, ah, not apathy, but there's this jadedness as if there's not wonder left in the world, right? And yet people are extremely dissatisfied with their, their circumstances, and if not string, extremely dissatisfied, more becoming more and more apathetic to the circumstances that they're in. So we call Pan also to do with the spiritual path, right? Because the playfulness, the frivolity, the make-believe, the getting loose, the lightening up is making way for a different version of yourself that is more able and to deal with the circumstances of your existence, but also more able to find joy in the experience of your everyday moments. People seem to want stimulation, 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 not recognizing that stimulation isn't simply feeling a lot, but taking in feeling, being inside of sensation. It's not about going to this thing, to this thing, to this thing, to this thing. It's about experiencing all the things that you come into naturally about your day and at the end of the day, coming back to yourself and taking all those different experiences, all those different dimensions, all those different worlds into consideration and seeing what sits well. Um, that's why also symbolically it's for breaking up old patterns. It's for recognizing that every everything is at play. Everything is a... a made up version of itself, like a game. But the game that people talk about in societal world is not, it's just not the game that people talk about. The game that isn't being talked about is the fact that every person is a dimension and every person is a world and every person has a right to the same. What I mean by that, a right to the same, isn't that everyone is born with equal uh, ability or talents or, or privileges or skill set. What I mean is that existence allowed for every single one of us to be here. And since no particular individual made the world, made the universe, made the solar system that we're in, made our galaxy, since no particular human alive today was there at the beginning of the world or the beginning of the universe, no one can really say we're all making this up as we go along. And it would be easier to understand that if we recognize that society, humanity is an invention that we came to through many avenues, including language, including 
uh, irrigation, including cultivation. And there's so many things that our ancestors, our human ancestors, our special ancestors had to learn in order for us to arrive here. But arriving here isn't an excuse to fall back on laurels, right? Like playful energy is active. Kid energy, it, you don't know where it comes from. And it comes in the weirdest times and in the strangest manners. And there's something about that playfulness that we really need to invoke now because the change is coming to us here. But we need to be open to it happening. Okay, so that's the concern for June. We need to be open to playfulness, open to make believe and getting loose and lightening up, but also recognizing that this is to an end, not to win, but to be joyful, to be joyful again. So breaking up the old patterns, letting go of cares and worries, more playfulness. We go through Never Neverland to remember our joyfulness. And then we return to the world of both joy and accountability, which is adulthood, right? Card number two, we have the nine of cups. Nine of cups, uh, cups is the suit of water. It is the suit of emotions. It is the suit of one-on-one -on -one relationships. It is the suit of uh, lover, lover, coworker, coworker, sibling, sibling, parent, do parent, child, and, uh, you know, pairs basically whereas fire is us and everybody else in the world so cups is about one-on-one -on -one relationships it also because it's water and rules emotions happens to rule the liquids in the body that's blood urine semen vaginal juices for that reason also it uh it rules creative energy both physically creative creating babies creating people creating uh, uh, future generations, but also the creative energy that we have in our everyday, what we do to express ourselves. Um, Nine of Cups right side up says, and this is in the obstacle or opportunity spot, self-satisfaction, hoarding, greed can mean personal satisfaction for the questioner. See, now this is an interesting card. It's a cautionary card, right? Because self-satisfaction is a relative thing. Well, one, it's related to the self. So your self-satisfaction could disadvantage millions of people. Hitler's self-satisfaction was killing a bunch of people unnecessarily in the most inhumane and cruel ways. Now, that's not necessarily a good thing, but if you're, what you want for yourself and what you want from the world is in alignment, is in alignment with existence, the universe, the natural order, universal order, cosmic order, the real nature of things, then ideally what I imagine is that it would benefit the world. Um, so this card is cautionary. Again, it's a self-satisfaction, hoarding, greed, can mean personal satisfaction for the questioner. Um, the way that it relates to the first card, Pan, being playful, is don't get lost in the game. A lot of people are lost in the game. People are here playing house, like as if to be born and go to school and to get a job and to be in a relationship for a long time and to move in and to be married and to have kids and to grow older and work and raise those kids and then retire and then have the grandbabies and then die is somehow like the universal equation. Okay, yes, of course, we have needed to procreate, to uh, create a society, create a world, a human world, that's true. But there are 7 billion of us here now. So, like, we did that. Like, birth doesn't need your help. So, we have enough people here now. For that reason, it's not enough to, again, this is rest on the laurels. It's not enough to think that simply because things ha are easier or more convenient than they've ever been before for a seemingly greater number of people in the world, that somehow we arrive, have arrived in Candide's best of all possible worlds. Obviously, that's not the case. So there wouldn't be all this drug abuse and this mental illness and this raging hormonal sh bang, bang, shoot, kill attitude as well. So why that relates is because getting caught up in the game means thinking that what humans have decided, how humans have decided to live their lives is the all, end all, be all of how to exist in the world. At the end of the day, we exist in a seemingly infinitely expanding universe with like mad open space. We on a 
spinning rock around a ball of fire. And we are animated meat. I mean, I don't, I see, I'm trying to go through this slowly and trying to be reasonable about it, but let's be honest. It is absurd to be alive. I mean, we don't know why this is happening. And we can have our theories and we can, we need those. You need that structure. You need a direction. You need a framework of understanding. But at the same time, like no one person has this figured out. So that's why we need to come together. That's why hoarding and greed and self-satisfaction is something to be wary of. Because when you get to a game, let's say like, depending on what game you're playing, you know, if you're playing Monopoly or if you're playing chess, you play in a game that you are trying to win, right? But the games that we want to play aren't... Oh, I... Okay, the differences between play and games here. The differences between play and games here. Um, I am at a disadvantage because I typically... I wonder if I can still record. Watch me fuck this up. Hold on. <laughs> 